Okay. Thank you, Lord. So let's um, let's read. First of all, the Book of Acts, chapter one. You know, some of us have been walking with the Lord for thirty and forty years. A lot of us. That's why you need the strong meat. That's why you're ready for the mysteries, not just the milk. We've heard these things, we've taught these things, we've preached all these things, we know them pretty much backwards and forwards, but a lot of it we only really know on surface, on the surface. There's so many levels. There's so many different levels and realms of the word that we can sink into, that we can unearth, if you will, uncover and discover the new things in the word. Let me set this up this morning by saying this, because this is the day of Pentecost today, it is the day on the biblical calendar, in the Gregorian calendar, it's June the 9th, but it is Shavuot. Shavuot, Shavuot, have you say Pentecost in Hebrew? Um, this is the day, the exact day. This would be the exact day when the Holy Spirit fell in Jesus' day. When Jesus had ascended and he told his disciples to go, which we're going to read here in a minute. And you know that, and to go wait in Jerusalem. You know, I've read some teachings and um, about where the upper room was. And um, see, the Jews, when they built the temple... They built rooms on the outside of the main temple. And these were rooms like classrooms. They were rooms for prayer. They were rooms for teaching and learning and studying. And people would gather in these, these outer rooms. <laughs> and, you know, maybe there was two or three stories to them. I don't know. But as I've read about that, that that was actually where they actually were at the temple. Not in the main part, but in an outer room or an upper room meeting doing what jesus said to do which was customary for them to go to this place and to go to these rooms to learn and to teach and to sit and to listen and to pray together to worship together and seek the lord so it wasn't something out of the ordinary for them so when they he told them to do these things they knew exactly what he meant there was no mystery to that part. The mystery part was, what was the promise? What was that going to look like? What was that going to be like? How were they going to receive that new thing? How was it going to happen? What was the way? So anyway, when you go back, whenever these feasts were initiated, through Moses. You go back into the Old Testament. And you can go into Exodus. It talks about them. Deuteronomy talks about them. Leviticus talks about them. And so this day of Pentecost. This Shavuot. Shavuot feast. Was also considered a spring feast. In their year. And it was the, the feast of the harvest of wheat. And we know in the Bible what Jesus taught about wheat. The, the, the wheat is golden. It's ready. It's mature. It's ready for the harvest to come. You know, I don't know who painted this. I don't have a clue. But this picture, huh? You did? I didn't know that. See this picture of wheat. The wheat sheaves. The wheat sheaves. This was the festival. This was the celebration. And it wasn't. It, it was an appointed time. A moad. An appointed time. They, it wasn't a choice. I mean it was a choice. Because they obviously God didn't make them. Because they quit celebrating them. Off and on. Through all those thousands of years. They didn't always keep the feast. And do what was right. But it was a commandment. How many know when you. You disobey a commandment. Anybody been in the military? How about just when you're 
back used to be in school, not so much now, but used to when the teacher would give you a command, you had to do it or you were in trouble. There was going to be a punishment. People don't like that word. But there was going to be discipline that followed. There was something that was going to happen that wasn't good. But these were commandments of the Lord to keep these feasts, these appointed times, these celebrations. And this day of Pentecost, what took place on the first day of the first Shavuot was that the Torah was given to Moses. The word of God was given to the earth. The Torah, the teachings of God. And then we move on through history on the day of Pentecost. See, that was the beginning. Now we're going to talk about like an ending or fulfilling. We know it was in Acts chapter 1 and 2. And what was given on this day of Pentecost? The Spirit. The Word and the Spirit. See, there's three major feasts. Passover, Pesach, Pentecost, Shavuot, and then Tabernacles. Um, what's the Hebrew name? Help me. I can't think of it right now. I should, but anyway. You know what I'm saying? Sorry about that. I can't remember it. So, you know, it's almost like a 30, 60, 100. The Word, the Spirit, and what, what is this? What is this? Follow me. If we had the beginning of something brand new, let's call it restoration. The beginning move of restoration. Because that's what it was. God brought his people, his nation, out of bondage and slavery in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They celebrated the first Passover. He brought them out. And 50 days later, they're standing at Mount Sinai. They were over here in Egypt. <laughs> we use this for Egypt. But it's, not, <laughs> it's the opposite of Egypt. But anyway, this is like Egypt. But this is the desert with wells and springs. And all that's good stuff. Out of here, Passover. They're journeying. God, miraculously, ten signs, wonders, sets them free. They come to, to this place called Sinai. This mountain. And, and God wants to meet with all of them. And they say, oh, you know, we saw your power in the demonstration. And we're a little bit scared because we're not really much better than the Egyptians. <laughs> and so... By your mercy and your grace, they were even here. And they were afraid to go. Moses and the 70 went up, and then the 70 got fearful and said, Oh, well, I'm not sure we're ready for this. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not in that place yet, Moses. And so then Moses went on alone. He went up into the cloud of smoke, the fire, and the smoke, the cloud on top of the mountain. And on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after leaving Egypt, after celebrating Passover, on the second day, the first day after Passover, come on, 50 days to right here. And then they, they're at the Mount Sinai, and God tells them about these feasts, and He gives them the months and all this stuff, and this new timeline. See, it's a new beginning. It's a new time. It's a new age. It's, it's the beginning of, of a restoration of what was before. And so God uses Israel. And, and God gives Moses the Torah, the Word. So the Word comes into the earth. And before that, the Word was only, it was only parts. Prophets would hear. You know, prophets would see. Certain people like Abraham. God would come to Abraham. You know, just like He came to, to Adam in the garden before the fall and all of that stuff. But this was something more powerful. It wasn't just the 30. Because I believe most of that stuff, I mean, <laughs> it's not a 30. This is a, this is a double. This is a double portion, a 60, if you will. 
60, and it, it's the Word, it's the, the Torah, it's the first five books of our canon. It's actually, it's actually seven books, by the way, not five. The book of Numbers is actually three books, three separate books. They put them into one. So it kind of makes more sense. He received the seven, the fullness of the Word. You see? Are you with me? Okay, one of you, good. Anyway, we got Pentecost here. We got Shavuot here. The Word is given. Now, we come down here through history. You know, all the history of Egypt and all the history of Israel and all that's happened, all that did happen with David and Solomon and all that mess and the ten tribes, all that stuff and the two tribes. Anyway, we come to this day where, for, of Jesus about 2,000 years ago, give or take a little, a little plus minus sign after that. 2,000 years and Jesus comes, right? The Messiah out of heaven. The Son of God comes out of heaven into the earth. Born of a Virgin Mary. We know the whole story. And so now, Israel kept the feast in the wilderness and celebrated Passover, um, Pesach, and Shavuot, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And I still can't remember the name. I wish somebody Google that for me so I could say it. I, should, I know it, but I can't come up with it. So anyway, Israel was keeping the feast at least part of the time. At least the fullness of the knowledge of the feast for their day was given. Then Jesus comes and Jesus is going to show the world again the fulfilling of the feast. Of these appointed times. So Jesus is birth. You know, and then Jesus is the Passover lamb. John prophesies, decrees, declares to everyone, this is the lamb of God that's come. For the salvation of the world. Most didn't believe it. Most didn't receive it. But he was. He fulfilled Passover within himself. And it says after the baptism. In the river Jordan. What? Jesus was led by the spirit. What happened at the Jordan? He already was the son of God. The Holy Spirit came upon a man. Not all mankind. But upon a man, like a foretaste, like a foreshadow of what mankind could become. He received the Spirit. So Jesus is the Word. John chapter 1 says Jesus is the Word. So right here, Pentecost, 2,000 years ago, we got the Word and the Spirit. Standing here. Jesus as the example, as the express image. Are you with me? Of the Word and the Spirit. And dwelt among us. And Jesus fulfilled Passover. By the Spirit coming, He fulfilled Pentecost. And then by His death, burial, and what? Resurrection and what? Ascension. Still here, this timeline. He fulfilled tabernacles. It says, The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Him bodily. Wow. Because He consecrated Himself. He says he did nothing except what he saw his father doing. This is how we get to there. <laughs> Can a vessel be so pure, pure gold, fully honorable? Can a vessel become that? Can a vessel live like that? Can a man or woman today be that? Just like Christ. I believe that we can or God would not have given us the promise. Given us, given us the revelations and the opening all this to us. He's an, it's an invitation. See, revelation is an invitation to step into something. Revelation is your eyes opening up to see something you didn't see before. And it's an invitation, since you can now see into it, to step into it. It's an invitation to come in and encounter and be immersed in it and to experience this, this revelation. Not just so you can go and tell your friends about it, but so you can be changed. Revelation is the doorway into transformation. <laughs> Hope you're getting this. So Jesus was a fulfillment. But the church, 2,000 years here, 
when you, when a person, the church, I'll say a person, when a believer, even just one or a many membered body, believes in Jesus, ask him into his heart, you fulfill Passover. Right? You receive the blood, your forgiveness, your cleansing. You're made new. Your spirit is reborn from above. You're born again. And then we celebrate or fulfill, keep the Feast of Pentecost by what? By receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Again, this was not a suggestion from God. This was a commandment from God. Most of the church today thinks it's just a nice little suggestion. It's just for the weirdos. Or for a few. No, it's for the whole church. It's for all of mankind. It's for every race, kindred, and tongue, and tribe. It's for all. And I'm telling you, when we don't obey, there is a consequence. There is a price that you will pay for not receiving the baptism, for not believing and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because when you stand before God on your judgment day, God will just say to you, it was written. It was, I'm not even to the revelation part yet here. The best part's at the end of this. I'm not even to where I was going to go to start with. So we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 1985 for me, receiving the, the baptism. But again, that's only 3060. How, what's over here? Because there's another step. There's another level. There's another place. In God for me and you. How do we get this double from the 30 doubling to 60 to doubling to 100 or 120? 120 Jubilees, 6,000 years. 120 in the upper room as a sign for what was to come. Anyway, see, that's a, that's a portion. That's a double portion. This is the fullness. This is the fullness. This is the former, the former and the latter in the same season. Right now, right here. So what's that look like? How, how, do we, how are we going to get there? What, it, what does it look like? What, how, what, do we, what do we expect to happen here? What's our part in this? How do we get to here? What's going on, Lord? <laughs> what are you sending? What are you releasing? What are you doing? What are you saying? Sukkot, tabernacles, Sukkot, Sukkot, Sukkot. I'm over here with Sukkot, tabernacles, God dwelling in us. Us being the temple, the tabernacle where God dwells. He can dwell if we prepare the vessel. If we sanctify and set ourselves apart like he did. We can... We can receive and move in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, just like Him. It became Him bringing many sons into glory. It's the only way we can do the greater works. It's the only way that we move in the fullness like He did. And then there's that multi multiplication thing. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand. See, the greatest work to be done is at the end. It's not even been fulfilled yet by the church. By me and you. Yeah, I got saved. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. New creation in Christ. I got filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Indeed, with power to do signs, wonders, and miracles. But what is this thing over here? It's not Passover. It's not Pentecost. This is Tabernacles. What does it look like to be a vessel of honor, pure gold, fit for the full use by our Father? A power and authority that the church has never walked in yet, but was modeled for us by Christ. See, the disciples didn't think they were worthy, especially Peter. He felt as unworthy as you could possibly feel and be at that time. So anyway, let's read here in Acts. The Word, the Spirit. What's this 
What's God doing in the next thing here? The former treaty, I don't, I don't want to read all this. Anyway, I'm going to start in um, verse 3. It says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. That means that doesn't matter how hard the non-believer tried, they couldn't disprove what they saw happen, what had taken place. There was something in the natural that shifted. There were changes that could not be denied. There were blind eyes open. <laughs> there were over 500 resurrected out of the ground. Jesus out of the tomb. They couldn't hide it. They couldn't lie to the people enough to get them not to believe. Because they saw it with their own eyes. They experienced it in their day. What are we going to see over here in our day? In our day. What are we going to experience over here? What's going to be the infallible proofs in your life? Being seen of them 40 days. So at the end of 40 days, what? It was the day of ascension. We always talk about the birth, burial, and resurrection. But see, the enemies lied to us and, and got most of the church to believe that that's it. And then when you die, you go to heaven. After Jesus raised me from the dead, I was dead in sin and trespass. I was resurrected. And now over the last few years, he's been teaching about how to ascend to him. Because Jesus ascended up after 48. So that 41st day was a day of ascension. The church has to learn how to ascend into the presence of God. And God is teaching those that will. Be it according to your faith. Many believe it and are exercising it and doing it. And it's something that is an infallible proof. The things that you see and hear in the Spirit. They're eternal things. Everlasting things. It says, 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together. In uh, Hebrew, that would be the word ekad. The word for one or oneness. <laughs> ekad. I didn't look the word up, but I, could, I can. I think I know it's an aleph, a het, and a dalet. I think that's the first letter's aleph. The father... The hit is the, is the letter of overshadowing. It's the marriage canopy. It's the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit of heaven upon earth. The door opens. The door is open for heaven to come to earth. There's a son and a spirit. How about the sons? He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But they got to come assembled together. But wait for the promise. Wait for the promise of the Father. I'm telling you. This is all about God's timetable. God's calendar. God's appointed time. God's big overall plan. These appointed times of Passover. Appointed time of Pentecost. There's an appointed time of Tabernacles. The fullness of God dwelling in man and with man. Wait for the promise of the Father. What happened over here? Passover is, is about what? The Lamb. It's about the blood. Passover, Pesach, it's about Jesus, right? Pentecost is about what? The Holy Spirit. Ruach Hokadesh. The Son, the Spirit. What's this one about? There's only one more part of the Godhead that we know about. It's called the Father. This is the Father's feast. This is where the Father feasts in him and in the midst of his sons and daughters. This is about oneness, unity, the fullness. With no barriers. With no hindrances. Nothing between us but love. Being so pure in heart, just like God is pure in heart. The pure in heart shall see God. They wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. It says, for John truly baptized with water. And they had all been baptized. They experienced that. They encountered that. They knew what that was like. 
But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Ruach Hokadesh. Many days hence. And then we know. Then it says questions. But then we go to Acts chapter 2. Verse 1. And we know he told them to go and wait. So they went for what? Ten days. Then the 40 days Jesus goes up. So they go to Jerusalem. I believe they're in a, an outer room or an upper room of the temple. Waiting for the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They had no idea what that was going to look like. The first baptism was water. The word. This baptism. They didn't know. But it was going to be fire. Wind and fire. <laughs> this had to do with the earth. The wind and the fire. So Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Sorry, I said that wrong. This has to do with not the earth. This has to do with the waters, the word, the waters. You know, even all the way back to Genesis one, it was all about the waters. <laughs> then you have the fire and the wind, and then there's going to be something about a new creation of the earth, heaven and earth. <laughs> Verse one says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Same thing again. One accord. Ikad. They were in a place where heaven was open. Where the door opens. And the Father shows them who He is. Expresses another part of who He is to them. And an overshadowing of the Spirit. Jesus said, you got to go wait boys. Because when I go, He's going to come. The Spirit of God is going to come. The second part of the Godhead is coming. I'm going to go up there and hang out with dad for a while. And he's going to come down here and hang out with you for a while. But don't worry because at the end we're all coming to be together. Heaven and earth are coming together and becoming one again. He caught again. When the day of Pentecost. When the day of Shavuot. 50 days after Passover. The counting of the Omer. From Passover and then the next days one. Two. All the way up. To fulfilling of seven, seven weeks. Seven weeks of seven days. Forty-nine days. Now Pentecost, the day, 50. The 50th day. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. Again, Matthew 3.11, I believe. Jesus said, you are going to be baptized with the Spirit and fire. Both come. The wind and the fire come. The Ruach and the Ish come. Spirit and fire. And we saw an outward expression. And an inward impartation. And transformation that took place in them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Ruach HaKodesh. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm not going to read any farther than that. Now. Let me back up here. I posted something yesterday I believe the day before. About in Hebrew the word wait. Because they were told to go and wait. For the promise of the Father. One of the words for wait is hakil. There's more than one word in Hebrew for things. There's another word for wait, and it's kavah. Hakil. Kavah. It means to be intertwined, twisted, and woven together so closely and tightly that you become as one. And actually take on the very nature, image, and likeness of the thing that you are engaging with. It is the place of intimacy where transformation takes place from the inside out. It is the secret place where you are changed to become as Him. Um, I haven't turned the air on if somebody wants to. 
And I'm sweating, but I, don't, I didn't want you guys to be cold this morning. So I just left it off. Did you hear that? They were told to wait. What were they doing in their waiting? They were worshiping. They were praying. They were seeking. They were engaging. They were being intertwined, twisted, and woven together so closely and tightly. They were becoming as one with one another and with their father, with God, with Yahweh. Are you with me? Taking on the very image, likeness, and nature of the thing they're engaging with. That place of intimacy. They're being changed. They're being changed into His image and likeness. The word promise that would have been used here in Acts chapter 1. So the, the promise of the Father, which is Ruach Kokodesh. The word, the, the word promise is Hab. I can't even spell it, but <laughs> Takoth. I can't speak it either. But in Hebrew, get this. It has a, you know, in Hebrew, the letters have numbers. It has a large gematria or numerical value. That word, the promise, has a numerical value of 424. Or if you keep reducing down 424, you get 4 plus 2 plus 4, which is what? 10. The small gematria, which is pretty cool, I think, is 28. You keep reducing it to its purest form, 2 plus 8 is 10. And reducing 10, so both large and small are saying the same thing. And at the end, they're going to meet together because the, the purest of simplifying these things is one. Ten becomes one. And what is one? The father. Aleph. First letter. The ox. This is about becoming one with him. Thank you, Lord. You know, nine is the number of birthing. It's, it's also the number of the spirit. Because you cannot birth anything without the Spirit. Because the Spirit has to birth it in you to birth it through you. Ruach Hokadesh. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit. Ruach, is the word for spirit in Hebrew. Has a gematria of 216 and 18. When you reduce those down to the same number. See it doesn't always happen that way. When you reduce those down to the simplest form it's 9. That's why 9 is the number of the spirit. 9 is the number of birthing. We're in a 9 season right now. The word. Kadash. Has a gematria of 409 or 13. When you reduce. Those down, they both end up being 13, which then becomes 4. 4 is the open door. What opens the door? Holiness, Kodesh, is holy. It's the word for holy. Being washed in the blood makes you holy. Not your works, His work. <laughs> holiness, the door of holiness opens for the Ruach, the breath to fill us. Hmm. See, they couldn't receive the Holy Spirit if they hadn't first received Jesus. So what's the first thing Peter does? He preaches salvation. He preaches Passover to them. He preaches the blood to them, and they get born again. And then they get filled with the Holy Spirit. 3,000 saved and filled on the first day after Pentecost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pentecost is the Feast of Wheat. The, the barley feast, the earliest uh, harvest was back with Passover. The barley and, and the bread made out of the barley. And I think there were some other things. And you know the unleavened bread and first fruits were all part of that first feast of seven days. This feast is one day. And it's about the harvest of the wheat. The wheat harvest. The beginning of the great harvest I believe. Wheat represents the, the lost. The fields are ready. They're ripe for harvest because they were golden wheat. Jesus was trying to teach them something. 
And he was showing them. And so, and it's really interesting because the word um, now, I wanted, I wanted to read this to you maybe in a, let me just grab my computer. Let's hope it didn't run out. I'm going to quit, but I want to teach you something here. I want to share something with you. Because when you, these scriptures originally written in Hebrew or um, Aramaic, if you will, which is really, to me, a form of Hebrew. There. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But I want to read this. I figure out where I'm at here. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Let me read chapter 1. I had this translation of what but these Greek, these Greek and Hebrew scholars, a lot smarter than me, not all of them agree. <laughs> but these guys have done their due diligence. This is one of the sites that I do use in translating the Greek into the Hebrew. This is the best guess, if you will, the best interpretation, transliteration, I guess would be a better word, of what actually Jesus would have been saying. Because in these intimate times, I don't believe Jesus was speaking Greek to them. I believe he was speaking in his, their native tongue, which was Hebrew. They all spoke Hebrew. And so, let me read Acts chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 to you. In the way that it would have been if it had been said in Hebrew. But I'm going to say it in English. But the words are in a different order. To whom he also presented himself alive to them after his suffering. By many proofs, being seen of them forty days. And speaking concerning the kingdom of Elohim. Elohim is a word for the powers. The kingdom of powers coming. It means there's a, there is a kingdom coming that has more power than any other kingdom. Verse 4. While they ate together. You would think they would have been fasting in those 40 days, huh? But while they ate together, because it's not by our works, you can't fast enough to get God to move. While they ate together, fasting is just about obedience. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father which you have heard from me. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Let me go back there. Didn't even hit on verse 8, which is about the power. So let me read that. Is this okay with you? Can I still do this? Okay. This is what Jesus said to them. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Yehuda, Judah, and in all Shamron, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. To the end of the earth. Anyway. If there's some hidden meaning there. There's a new heaven and earth coming. Okay now let me read verse 1 and 2. It says on the day of Shabbat. Shabbat is the word. Or Shabbat. Sometimes they put a B or a V. This is Pentecost. After seven complete Sabbaths. Sabbats. All of them were collected with one heart together we're collected with one heart see it's still about the heart the problem is still the heart the heart of man is still wicked it needs to be transformed there's still parts of our heart that have to be transformed it has to do with our soul realm but Acts 2 2 suddenly there came a sound from the heavens plural like a violent rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting in it. Where they were sitting in it. And there was suddenly from the heavens. Oh, I read that already. Sorry. There appeared to them. Divided tongues. In the appearance of fire. Divided tongues. That means many different languages their prayer language they don't they weren't didn't all get the same exact prayer language that's why when you get baptized we have different prayer languages 
But theirs was an even more greater supernatural impartation because they were speaking in different languages. They didn't even know, but the people that heard them, because all of the tribes that had come out of these different nations together in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. And they heard them speaking in all these other languages and dialects that they didn't even know. Verse 3, There appeared to them divided tongues in the appearance of fire, and it sat one by one upon each one of them. So see, it's one by one. This is a personal thing. This is a personal thing. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them to speak. I like that. They began to speak in these other languages as the Spirit gave them to speak. As the Spirit gave them utterance, the King James says. Did you know? You don't know, but I took these words out of Acts 1 and 2. Wait, the promise, immersed, Holy Spirit, the word now, the word Pentecost, the word power. The word suddenly, the word sound, the word fire, filled tongues. And I was looking just at the numerical values, the hidden meanings in the numbers of Hebrew that these words and letter, these letters and words represent. Okay? And so, let me, I just want to show you a connection here. Okay, the word wait, I told you, if you, you reduce that thing down, well, I didn't tell you, but when you reduce it down, it ends up either way being five. So what is the wait about grace? About waiting for heaven to open. Because that's the hay. Grace. Open heaven. The word promise. When you reduce it down, it's ten. When you reduce ten, it's one. Both ways. Large and small gematria. 424, 28. Reduces. Why? Because the promise is from the Father. The promise is of the Father. It's all about... This last thing that God is doing is all about Him. But they're 10 and 10. What is 10? That's the number of foundation of the government. Foundation of the kingdom is 10. The foundation of every creation is 10. 1 and 0 or 0 and 1. That's why computer language is all based on 10. 0 and 1. The word immersed is a 92 or 11. 92 reduces down to what? 11. What is 11? 11 is the letter of awakening, transitioning, translation. And 11 reduces to 2. Immersed. 2 becoming 1. An example, when you go into the water, you're becoming 1 with what? His death and His burial. And when you come up, resurrection. The 2 becoming 1. The words Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, 216 or 18, reduces down to 9. Both of them. The Holy Spirit is 9. And what's the, the letter Tet? The Holy Spirit. The Tet is something that surrounds or encircles someone or something. Like a garden, like a fence around a garden. You're fenced in, but there is an opening. Now on the bad side, it can mean being in, surrounded by a, a serpent that's coiling around you. So we don't want to do that. We want God to encircle us and immerse us with the Holy Spirit. Surround us. Why? To birth something new. Because the Holy Spirit comes to do a new work through first in you and then through you. Nine. The word now is 490 or 13. 13. 409 reduces to 13. The same as the small drug. They both reduced to 4. Because that was the open door. God opened a door right then. A heavenly supernatural door was open. Now. So 4 is the open door. The word Pentecost. Or Shabbat. Or yeah, Shabbat or Shabbat. The Feast of past, uh, Pentecost. As up to 803 or 29. May not make any difference to you, but they both add up, simplified to 11. Again, what is 11? Awakening, transitioning, transforming, moving into something new. 
11 is between what 10 the foundation of the kingdom and the fullness 12 of the kingdom it's the in between but you're moving you're transitioning from a beginning to an ending that's what the feasts are all about transitioning from the beginning passover all the way to tabernacles the ending where god dwells with man in the fullness and there's no no two there's there's just one and 11 reduces two becomes one the word power here in Hebrew would have been Gabura. I don't even know how to say it. But it's 216 and 18. Reduced, both reduced down to 9. Because it's the power of what? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the power. 9. That word suddenly in Hebrew would have had a gematria pithom. I don't know how to say these words. But 521 or 17. They both reduced down to 8. Why? Because that was a day of new beginning. That was a suddenly. And I believe there was a suddenly back there at Passover. In one day, God brought them out of Egypt. Remember? They put their blood and God came and killed all the firstborn except the ones that had blood on the doors. Pentecost was one day. I believe that it's going to be a suddenly, a one day. Something's going to happen. There is a new thing going to be birthed. And it's good. that's when it comes forth. Eight, a new beginning. The word sound in Hebrew has 726 to 24. Reduced 726 down to 15. 15 reduces to 6. So they're both 6. So the sound, what is 6? Six? 6 is the valve. 6 is also man. So man is, has to connect with something, with a sound. They heard a sound like a violent rushing wind. There is a sound or frequency of heaven that we have to engage and be entangled with because then we're changed into that thing. We're transformed. The word fire is a gematria of 301 or 4. They both reduce to a 4. A door, an open door of fire. I believe God's opening a door of fire in the church to purify the church. Because she's got to be purified. I think that's the big deal. That's why we haven't walked in the fullness. We're, we're disqualifying ourselves. But there's coming a day. A, a, a moment. When God is going to open that door. For the fire to come. And, and actually I believe that we can open the door by faith. And engage with the fire. And be cleansed and be purified and be made ready. The word filled has a gematria of 87 or 15. Reduced down, 87 is 15. Reduced down, they're both 6 again. So the fire and fill, who? Man. Man is filled with the fire. 6 being the number of man. 6 days of creation, 6,000 years. For 7, right? For a 7th day. The word tongues, in Hebrew would have been shanoth. Which has a gematria of uh, I don't even oh I said let's see I lost track 786 or 21 786 reduces to 21 21 and 21 reduces to 3 tongues 3 Father, Son, Holy Spirit the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in sons and daughters anyway 21's breakthrough also. So, just fun Hebrew stuff, just making these connections. It's just to give us an understanding, revelation, so we can see how it, it's all this grand plan of God. From the beginning to the ending, He's got it covered. He knows exactly every step and what's going on. Every day is numbered, <laughs> every day is planned, is orchestrated. You know, is, is ordered by God. And then we have to come into his order of things. And you do that when you come into the kingdom. But then you've got to continue to make the adjustments. To be in his order. To follow him and not man. Divine order and not disorder. So. I really believe. You know, even today being 6-9. June the 9th in the Gregorian. Six, again, number of man. Nine popping up again. 
the Spirit birthing something out of us, through us and out of us, to be seen. 6 9. So I believe that there's been something significant open today in us that will now we'll take this. It's going to change us so that we can change others. So that we can release the kingdom. So we can build the kingdom one on one. The Spirit came one and then on another one. Then on another one. Then he moved out as Peter preached and began to move on 3,000. Because see, God's about restoration. 3,000 died at the first Pentecost. 3,000 were restored at the second Pentecost. It's the fullness. It's, it's called justice. There's another justice. There's greater justice that's coming. So I'm going to quit now. But I'm telling you, there's something significant. These are special times that we're living in. I mean, these are ordered, appointed days that we're living in. And I believe as the closer we're getting to the ending over here, which is way over here, just really where we're, this is the destination, is to be one with Him. To be fully immersed and become ikad, one joined with Him. Where you can't tell us apart anymore. The two are joined so closely together, you can't tell me or Him. You can't tell if it's Christ or if it was Peter. If it was me or my father, the son looks just like his father. The daughters look like their father. Hallelujah. In the spirit. So, Father, thank you for this word. I pray, Lord, that we would all agree and align and allow you to do the work that you need to do in us by fire to purify our hearts and our motives in order to prepare us, Lord, to walk in the fullness of the fullness of what's coming, the fullness of your kingdom, to be fit for use like vessels of gold and honor in your house, Lord. Make a way just like you've always done before. You will make the way for us to come into it. I thank you, Lord, that it's going to come into us and then come in through us to others. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Jesus name amen